Huskers worked their way here through their 14th fall camp practice on Tuesday. Hi, Sean Callahan with HuskerOnline.com. We talked with head coach Matt Rule, tight ends coach Josh Martin, and a few other players as we got the latest on where this team is at here in the midpoint of week three. The challenge has been to not try to get through it, right, to try to get better. Um, the days start to pile up on you, obviously, but when you look at it on the flip side, there's not many days left to practice before 831, so... Um, we, you know, we better remain a very humble team, you know, and and uh, if we want to be confident come game time, we have to earn it right now. So um, there's a, the added distraction of being home, being out of the dorms and all those things. And uh, um, I think our guys have maintained good focus so far. So I've, I've never questioned this team's work ethic. They work. So, so far, it's been pretty good. We know Jeff Sims is the starting quarterback for Nebraska. But what about the other guys like Heinrich Harburg and Chubba Purdy? Yeah, we, we can win. We can play and win with Chubba or Heinrich. Um, we get a lot of reps here, and those guys are playing really good football. Chubb has made just massive strides. Um, and I think probably a lot of it just has to, you know, new coaching staff was trying to prove a lot in the spring, and I think he settled down and just played football. So he's uh, been excellent in the passing game. He can really run, and Heinrich's uh, passing ability is really developing, um, getting through progressions, understanding protections, um, seeing the field. So I think both guys have had a really good camp. Um, both guys are, are – are dual threat quarterbacks. They can both run and throw. They're both four or five guys. So um, they give us a lot of flexibility. And then, you know, Luke Longville's here with us. Luke, um, we just had a threes live scrimmage at the end of practice, and he did a great job. He knows, his, he knows the system. He knows the scheme. So we have four guys that we feel like um, can go out and execute for us. Offensive line depth continues to be a question right now with Teddy Prohaska out. Rule made it sound like there's still a couple of guys short of where they want to be depth-wise. Yeah, it's been Turner. I mean, Turner's the only left tackle I've known since I've been here, right? So I think Turner's playing well. Uh, Gunner's done a nice job with the second team. Um, I think Teddy, you know, told me today he's hoping that he's hoping that he'll be back here soon. So he's, you know, he's taking the next phase on in his um, in his rehab. Uh, so, you know, Teddy to me, like I don't want to bring him back a day too early. You know, I'd rather a day too late than a day too early. But I'm sure he'll be ready here soon. And um, uh, but you know, Turner's playing really good football, and we got a lot of confidence in Turner. And as I said, he's the only guy I've ever. Well, me being in the huddle here in the play, it's the only guy I've ever seen at left tackle with the one. So. One emerging name here in fall camp from that freshman class has been defensive back slash return specialist Ethan Nation. Yeah, I don't know what Ethan's role will be yet. Um, he's very dynamic. Uh, he's an explosive player. He catches people's attention. He catches their eyes. Um, he plays really hard on defense. Uh, he's aggressive. He kind of has a feel for getting the ball. He looks dynamic as a returner, though we haven't done a lot of live returns yet with him. Like We've done some thudded up ones. Um, so young returners, it's always about their ball security and ability to protect the football. And so I don't have a great feel for that yet because he is a defensive player. Um, but I can see his athleticism, his explosiveness, and his mindset. You know, uh, a lot of this is just about maturity. Everybody has the talent to play, who has the mindset to prepare to play all the time. And uh, he has that he has that confidence, and that swagger, that's humble enough to also coach still. We heard a lot about the scrimmage this past Saturday and just the offense and where they were at overall. Rule said he wasn't necessarily upset about how they produced yards and points. It was more the little things. Yeah, I, I think maybe I, I probably said it wrong after the scrimmage. My issues with the scrimmage were uh, the, the procedure stuff. Like, I'm, the football was pretty good. You know, they played good football. The pass protecting was the best it's ever been. It's just, you know, it, 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 we ran into a phase of, like, we spent so much time getting reps and less time sort of um, – you guys have been, well, you guys have really been there. We spent a lot more times with um, multiple fields going. We haven't spent probably enough time yet um, coming off the sideline, subbing off the sideline, all those different things. So that was sort of a little bit of a wake-up call. But that was all procedural stuff. In terms of the actual football, um, I, thought it was, I thought it was good, you know. Um, so so I, I'm pleased with where we are. As I told the team, you're right where they're supposed to be. Like there's, you know, just if the defense plays well, you know, I'm the head coach. If the defense plays well, it means the offense didn't play good enough. If the offense plays well, it means the defense didn't play good enough. So, but, yeah, I think the offense, um, the offense is playing good football. They just had a little more urgency um, uh, in, in terms of running on and off the field. So, you know, sometimes the players will say, you know, I heard Jeff yesterday kind of, you know, hey, we we're a little sluggish. So that's a, it's really just more about running on and off the field and getting in the huddle and getting out of it. So I, I think the football was fine. We heard from tight ends coach Josh Martin as well for the very first time since stepping into that role. It's actually a position he's been familiar with as he became an interim position coach before this at Arizona State. Yeah, so actually this is not the first time that this has happened before. So back in 2015, 
um, I was a grad assistant at um, Arizona State, and we had so we had some a coaching turnover like two weeks into training camp, and so I moved. I transitioned from um, from you know being an offensive line GA to being thrown into the tight end room. Uh, I was I was named the running back coach, but I actually coached the tight ends that year, and so. Um, who would have thought, you know, eight years later, something similar happened. So, you know, you, you, your experiences uh, prepare you for the, you know, for the present moment, for the future. And so, um, you know, the, when, when this happened, it wasn't the first time that it happened in my career. And so I was able to, you know, take a deep breath, say, okay, you know, you've done this before. And, you know, you've had some, uh, you know, you've been able to, you coach the position for a long time. And so, you know, it was something, it was natural, natural for me to be able to step back into that role. So Martin was quick to praise tight end Thomas Fedoni. You know what? I've been proud of Thomas. Um, the thing about Thomas that, you know, obviously he's got, you know, he's got great size. He's got great length. He can run. You know, he's, he's you know, really athletic, freak athlete. Um, what I don't know what people truly know about him is how, like, how much he loves football and how much, like, how he really, like, he's, he's really, really hard on himself, but he is a, he's a constant seeker of knowledge. He's a perfectionist, and sometimes, like, hey, look, I, hey, you made a bad play. You got to move on, right? You got you to, uh, you know, you have to move on. Like, you know, what's next mentality, like we say all the time with our players, and um, but I've been really, really proud of Thomas and his, his progression on the field and then just in the, in the film room. I mean, he's always just constantly, hey, coach, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? What do you think about this? And he's, just, he's constantly trying to improve. And that's, just, that goes, that's the same with a lot of these guys. With you know, Nate Borks, just the same way. As for the adjustment to Martin, Fedoni says it's gone very smooth. Uh, it didn't take long at all. Um, me and him, shoot, the first day he was here, he introduced himself and kind of who he was and everything like that. And, Ever since then, I would honestly, sometimes I'd go ask him questions and talk to him about, you know, tight end rule and whatnot. And um, I didn't get to see him a ton because he was more special teams at the time. So, but in the beginning, yeah, I would, I would ask him questions. And then when he came in here, he came in here and he knew, every, he knew everything from eight months of install in a few days. Um, so it's been really well, really well. He did, he did a great job. It's been a long road back for Fedoni coming off two major knee injuries, but clearly both he and this coaching staff feel like he's poised to have an impact year. Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't know. You know, I know Thomas Torres ACL the first time. You know, he, he took just kind of a really unfortunate low shot to his knee. It wasn't like the knee gave out. I mean, he took a – it's one of the most gruesome hit things I've ever seen, you know, and just took a hit to the knee last year. So, um, I mean, I think anybody would have blown it out. So, I, you know, I think for him, he's done such a good job rehabbing. That I don't notice any difference. You know, what I mean, you know, he timed him in the summer at 255. He was low four fives. I mean, he's a freak athlete. Um, I've never. He, he's probably as hard on himself as I am on myself. So we have a lot in common in that regard. Um, but what I'm seeing from him is, you know, if he has a bad play or makes a mistake while he's still angry with himself, he's starting to quickly say what's next and get over it. And he's made some plays at the end of, at the end of practices in the two minute down in the red zone to Sam's point. He's made some plays down there to win game, you know, win scrimmages for us or team period. So I'm really happy with where he's coming. He's in there every day with the coaches working to get better. He's he wants to be here, and I think he will be. I've said it all the times. I expect myself to be the best. Um, if I if I said I wasn't, I'd be lying to myself. Um, no, I expect myself to be the best tight end, and you know I'm, I'm gonna hold myself to that standard. Um, and you know what? Whatever happens, happens. But I'm gonna shoot for the stars. You know what I mean? Like. I'm not gonna shoot lower than what I believe. Like I know I can be, I know I can. I just gotta make myself get there. And speaking of impact players, running back Anthony Grant back again, the 24-year-old in his sixth season, hoping to make an impact. Still though, number two at running back at this point behind Gabe Irvin Jr. I'm proud of Anthony. Um, um, Anthony, we all know he can run the football at a high level. There's also a lot more to playing running back than that, and I see him developing in those areas. He's been very dependable in terms of being where he's supposed to be, taking care of his body, handling all his business. Um, you know, he did an internship this summer, and uh, the, the, the place where he did the internship, you know, he's working with kids. They said he's one of, the, one of the best interns they've had in a long time. So he's a kind-hearted, wonderful young man. Um, and, you know, he's run with the twos a lot, and he's just battled and made plays. And so now he's running with the ones a lot. So, I mean, our running back situation, I couldn't be happier with Gabe, Ramir, Anthony, um, I think Emma Johnson's doing a great job. Quentin Ives, Trevin Lubin are doing a really nice job. So uh, I think we could get down to the fifth string and still play winning football. As far as like what we're sitting at, like with the, you know what I'm saying, like wins and, you know what I'm saying, losses, like, you know what I'm saying, I really feel like I really feel like I can flip, I can really flip it around for us this year. Like, I really feel like, uh, you know what I'm saying, my, like, my role, my role is, you know what I'm saying, is more this year to say. Uh, not that it wasn't last year, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, uh, 
like, yeah, like, I mean, I feel like a lot is expected from me. Yeah. Um, I feel like, you know what I'm saying, I, could, I can really, you know what I'm saying, I can really do something big this year. I can really do something special this year. And then we heard from offensive lineman Nuri Nueli, who was suspended this past season, uh, but he has one of those starting guard jobs locked down right now. We're all getting 1% better every day, and like um, one of the things that we emphasize as an O-line is seeing out of, out of one set of eyes. You know, we're five guys. We're the only position group that has to play with different people around you. You know, like every other position group, most of the time they can make a play. But as an offensive lineman, if one guy screws up, the whole offensive line screws up. And so being us, us being together and like at literally everything, not only you know in practice or whatever, but that helps out a lot to like make sure that the guy behind us is clean. And finally, look for another round of single-digit jersey voting to take place here this week. Yeah, we'll probably vote in the next day or so, depending on how kind of how days go, right? Like I have a little tradition, like you know, my daughters are always at the beach, and when they get here. I always let the team go early, so last night I let everyone go early when they got here. So we didn't have a team meeting last night. So today, tomorrow, one of those days, we'll, we'll vote for a couple more and see what happens. Huskers are back for their 15th practice on Wednesday. Reporting with the Nebraska football team in Lincoln, I'm Sean Callahan of HuskerOnline.com.